Hello everyone, Firecrazy Gaming here and welcome back to another video. We're back now with the end of the year video, ranking all the games that I have played throughout 2016. Obviously, as it, as it goes, this list is just games that I have played through 2016. Some of them go quite far back, so keep that in mind. And number two is the fact that this is just my personal opinion. You don't have to agree, and I can imagine straight from the get-go, I'm going to be disagreed with. Only one honourable mention though I will put before this list is Dead Rising 4 because I went out to Insomnia 59 um, obviously in December and well I only got to play a quick 10 minute demo of it there but I can say it's a bit of a hack and slash some of the finishing moves are pretty cool but to be honest I'm not that into zombie games as such and it just felt a little bit you know, as though you just kept pressing the X button and doing that stuff, kind of... I don't know, I feel as though it would wear out ridiculously quickly and it get pretty boring to me. Right, just before we start, I just want to do a quick thing, a kind of a bit of a summary as such as uh, my experiences with gaming in 2016. This is kind of... Um, if I have to look back on 2016, one thing I have to remember from it will have to be um, me getting good at the Souls games. To be honest, as much as maybe it might be a little bit of a gimmick thing or... Maybe it may not mean that much to other people, but to me, this is going to be the year that, one, I started to love the Soul series, and that I started to actually get good at them and be able to complete them for once, which was uh, pretty nice. Uh, there were a lot of other games, and I did actually like them, uh, just to name a few. Overwatch, Titanfall 2, Mafia 3, but to be honest, it's got it's got to be Souls, just... The, the lore surrounding all of them, the um, just the combat, just always being intense and always overcoming massive challenges. It's just something stuck out, and it was such an amazing feeling to get through all of it. But uh, regardless, that will uh, is it for the introduction. So uh, let's get on to the full video. But regardless, let's move it on to my tie for the worst game that I have played in 2016. Go. To give what credit I can, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare isn't half as bad as the tidal wave of hates and dislikes were before the game's release. However, it's at the bottom of my list, so it doesn't make it a good game by any margin. I said before that I felt this pick might be controversial, but that was for the other side of things. I don't think I'll have many disagreements on this one. So, what about the remaster? The only thing keeping this game relevant probably being the main reason anyone bought the more expensive version of this game? Well, I'll summarise it in this clip. Wow! Great respawn point, guys! Do it so you immediately get shot! Oh my god! That's pretty much a spawn kill! Give or take! That's spawn killing! See, there's a fine line between Making a difficult section of a game and just spamming the ro room full of enemies so you just get hit from every single side and there's no way to run. I'm not good at the game, but it is ridiculously hard for someone who doesn't really play Call of Duty that often. Say what you want about my gaming ability, but it doesn't matter how good of a game you are, if you have a respawn point which immediately shoots you and there is no way to get out of it, that is ridiculously unfair. That's not, that's not on. I never got around to completing either of these games, and I don't intend to. In my, in my opinion, Call of Duty in general have the worst games I've played in 2016. However, there is one actually of a redeeming part I can say to both of these. Mon neither Modern Warfare Remastered or Call of Duty Infinite Warfare disappointed me in any way. I wasn't expecting anything into Infinite Warfare, Maybe a tiny bit from Modern Warfare Remastered, and I can see why people like them, but I, they're not my cup of tea. However, the thing that normally is my cup of tea, and something that I should like, actually, t well, <sighs> get your pitchforks ready, people. Don't you even think about it. Oh, come on! How can he turn better than me? He's in a challenger! That's what I mean when I said earlier the driver tiles are broken. You're in a... You're in a Ford Raptor. You should have fallen behind at the start. 
You shouldn't even be here. Just, like, give us comparative cars. Give us... Against this... What else can you get? Um, The R8. Give us the... Wait, what class was this? AS1900. Give us the... um. I, I don't know. It, yeah, give give us give us the R8. Give us the um the no, the old GT. Well, when I say old, I kind of mean kind of kind of old. No, wait, kind of modern for GT. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. Um, four eight eight, four five eight, Murcielago. Come on, guys. Can you not put comparative cars? That are just why? Mid video rant aside, the card kind of says it all. I'm really going to look forward to the comments on this one. But, in my opinion, Forza Horizon 3 just isn't a good game. It, obviously, it was following on from Forza Horizon 2, which, no doubt, that is probably, was, and probably still is, one of the best races to be on Xbox One, if not the best. There was just something about it that was so nice about it at the time. It was so much fun. I, it just something clicked. There was just... It's not something you can explain with Horizon 2. It's just such a good game once you get into it. This just doesn't have it. This is easily my most disappointing game of 2016. Just to go over a few things, well I can give it credit, the handling physics, they are lovely, they generally are. The cars are brilliant to drive, and as much as that should matter in a racing game, every other little thing annoys me. For instance, they added in a feature whereby you could add your own music to the game, uh, in the groove music thing, you may have just saw it quickly there before I went into the menus. Um, and you could implement that, you could implement that um, and listen, obviously listen to your own music as you go along. The problem is, it's about as bro it's about as reliable as a 20-year-old Renault. Funny, the first episode of my pl of my genuine playthrough of this, I said I have no words. Yeah, I still have no words. For how bad this genuinely turned out to be. And then, for the people who bought the Ultimate Edition, they Playground Games just kicked you right, right in the area where it hurts. Doesn't matter... Which, whichever, wherever it hurts most, that's where they kicked you. Because the ultimate edition of this game does not include the expansion pass that allows you to get the expansions for free. This game has made me so angry and just so sad at the end of the day that this is what we got from a game that seemingly was going to be perfect. Playground Games, we're looking at you in two years' time you better you better make up for this. You better give us a good game for Horizon 4. We're watching you. Alan, you're always up and on the ball on these matters. Alex Hunter included in the FIFA Ultimate Team, Team of the Week. There have been pictures of him making the rounds on social media, posing with his FIFA Ultimate Team item. Yeah, I mean, it's become a, a big deal in the football community and for somebody of his age it will mean a lot. Is there anything more I genuinely need to say for this game? It's another FIFA game and with an extra spice of cringe this time. I'm sorry, like, I'm not sure if that comes up for anybody else, but for me that is really, oh, just, that does not sit well. That really doesn't. <laughs> It may not seem like it, but it on, almost feels like EA are trying to advertise their own mode within um, within another mode. Just, what's the point? Is there any real point in um, in doing that? Because it just, it comes off as more, you're still trying to point people towards Ultimate Team, which, as people have discussed in the past, has um, has been a money-making machine. As it is. It's the speed cameras of, uh, of FIFA. But as we uh, moving on, to move on from anything else other than the uh, the cringe of the journey, um, how does the game actually stand out in gameplay? It's uh, it's not it's not good. It's another FIFA game to be honest, and they don't really feel like they change this much um, much every year. But this time, it seemingly just um, the passes just don't want to work half the time. The switching between players when you pass, you just go to the wrong player half the time. And I'm a hundred percent sure I'm pushing the stick in the right direction, so I don't know what the game is interpreting as my actions, but it's certainly not what I'm pressing, I'm asking it to do. And also, the fact that some people who are more advanced and actually much better at FIFA than I am have said that this game is way too easy. And I couldn't agree more, actually, after seeing it. Um, if anyone hasn't seen it, I'd recommend actually going, maybe going to have a watch of uh, Flying Orangutans. 
channel. Uh, he's actually quite a funny YouTuber. But he also he made a FIFA series which he did by which he did a whole career mode, and he actually won the Premier League in the first season, which is just just awful. Just how and it was on world class difficulty as well, so it's not as though he was trying to cheap it. He was trying to cheap it out like I would. But regardless, that's not good. It really isn't. When it if the game is that easy seemingly then that's terrible. However, I don't know, maybe there's a minor bit of redeeming quality to it. Sorry, no, not redeeming quality. That's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was, um, it's funny to laugh at the fun at the bad stuff. That's that's all it is. This game, if I'm honestly going off pure mechanics and pure gameplay, is the only one that can rival the Call of Duty games for me in being absolute garbage and something I don't want to play. But for the absolute funniness of everything else, I'd happily come back to this. So it's kind of, it's more of a pointing at the bad stuff and laughing, rather than I want to come and play this game non-stop. So, uh, make judgement over that as you would like. Script? The card has a good summary of this next game. Now, just as a clear note at this for the, for the next few games, I don't necessarily think any of these games are bad or boring or anything like that. I see smaller flaws in them that, build, that don't even build up to that bad. It's just that, to be honest, I think the quality of the games that I play don't tend to actually be that low at the end of the day. I don't want to say like, oh, I've got good judgement, oh, look at me, guys. No, I kind of, it's just, um, I just want to avoid the, um, the mediocre stuff as such, the stuff that... A, a tiny developer puts out and then no one really pays attention to it until the YouTuber just brings it up to uh, brings it to um, the limelight as such so getting on to Deadpool the video game this was released all the way back in 2013 but I only got around to playing it um, it was around May 2016 and uh, I actually really like this the combat is very very cool you just saw there one of those attacks the um the running multiple blades thing. The combat, there is a lot of variance with the combat, so you can switch it up a lot. Well, as you see then, you have the guns, the different melee weapons. There's just so much stuff um, to make everything different, which does help <clears throat> when you go against the same enemies over and over again. It does. That's the repetitive part of this game, which um, does get a bit annoying, I'll admit. But the, also, not forgetting the with Deadpool, it's the underlying fourth wall. 4-4 four, four breaking humour that um, there always is um, and to be honest it's just an out, all round outright comedy, it really is it's so funny and, and top of that having some pretty good gameplay, I wouldn't say excellent but pretty good so uh, I think instead of leaving you with my closing remarks, I'm going to let him finish things off Damn. You can sing crazy <laughs> I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. <laughs> like I'm crazy. I'm crazy for feeling. <laughs> See my stuff. And so, for the last game of the day, we've got Beyond Two Souls. This is not an easy game, at least for me, to talk about. I mean, I don't really have much to say about it. And also I don't have any gameplay, because at the moment I don't have my capture card up and running on the PS4. So uh, give me some time, and uh, I'll probably have um, uh, footage for the rest of the three PS4 games... Actually, no, four PS4 games that will be turning up later on the list. But uh, on Beyond the Two Souls, I, d I don't know what to say about it. The gameplay, if I can talk about it, is... um. It's a basically a direct, almost rip-off of such, of Heavy Rain. It's all QTE-based. But it just does everything worse. If I can give it any credit, the game was, came out in 2014, 2013 as a remaster as, from the original version, and it does look extremely good for the time. It is astonishing looking for the time. But that's all the credit I can give. I mean, let me bring up this picture of the timeline so I can bring on, on to another point. There, this is a timeline of every single mission that you get within the game. And 
the way it works is you keep going back and forth, in bet- forward in time, backwards in time, and that was in an original, the original version that I played it, because it's the way that they, the, the company developed it. And I decided that's the way I wanted to play it, you know, as it was originally made, and it just felt right in that way. And it's just so jumbled up, and it just doesn't make sense in any way. It, it doesn't work, basically. And everything else is just, I don't know, the cliches and everything gets old, and they they just use the same exact emotions, almost. They, they try to, I, I can tell they're trying to pluck at heartstrings, but it, it ain't working here. I'm afraid. It's horribly cliched, and repetition isn't going to break me emotionally. But it is better than some of the other things we've seen on this list so far. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed going through the five games that we have today on the countdown to the New Year's. Next time we'll be picking up with the games that are definitely far off the bottom of the list, and definitely are not garbage. Maybe just ones that I don't prefer as much as some of the things higher up, but do prefer much more to these snoozing, snooze-inducing, terribly disappointing, well, pieces of garbage. I hope to see you next time when we can, when we'll pick that up. See you then, guys. Goodbye.